Welcome back. It is his very first appearance here on CT24, but he was a frequent guest on CT23 and CT22. We just can't get rid of him. CT Insider columnist and senior editor Dan Hart joins me this morning via Zoom. Dan, welcome. Great to be here. Thank you. Happy New Year. I'm planning ahead for 2025 already, so well, we're moving. We always wait to see if they make the new graphics. That's the big question. Is the graphic behind me going to have the new number on it? Uh, listen, I want to talk about some new stuff in the new year, and one of them is traffic cameras, some options for cities. Explain what's happening with this. There are a lot of people who, despite it being the law, are pretty worked up about it. Yeah, they should. They, they are worked up for, for possibly good reasons. The legislature, you will recall, some time ago passed an enabling act that said towns may, not must, may put in traffic cameras for speeding all over 10 miles an hour above the limit and or running red lights. They can't do it for other things. Those are the two things. Those are the major things anyway. And so towns, some towns like West Hartford and Stanford have signaled that they are moving quickly in this. Uh, the rules put out by the DOT this past week essentially spell out what the towns can and can't do. There's a limit to the number of places. I think it's a dozen in a town, maybe smaller in small towns. There's a limit by census tract. You can only have one or two, depending on the size of the census tract. So you can't flood one census tract, one neighborhood with lots of things. The major concern, especially in the part of the um, urban and minority communities, is that there is targeting. Because as, as with any police action, there is always concern in the communities in the cities and among uh, minority residents of Connecticut that they are being targeted. Um, and so there, those rules are in part designed to address that, but the um, both the ACLU and the uh, NAACP in Connecticut have continued concerns. So we're just going to have to see how it plays out. Nobody's going to see anything for about a few months, several months to late in the year. But we have some of those cities, uh, like you said, West Hartford, Stanford, saying we're, we're going to do this. Certainly people uh, who drive in other places. I, I know I've, I've been in, in Florida in cities where the, the ways all of a sudden chirps up to say red light camera ahead. Uh, it's going to be something that people here one way or another are going to have to get used to, I guess. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's a, the question is, does it upset the balance? It's sort of an accepted balance in society that they can catch you on traffic, but they have to be there. And this is sort of you know, the, 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 in our mind's eye, it's much like AI, right? We are afraid of something in AI that's not here yet. And it's the same thing with this. We are afraid of something that isn't here and isn't on these rules going to be here. And that is cameras on every intersection and right turn on red, you know, that kind of thing. They're not getting you on. Well, actually, they are because it's running a red light. So you, you, you are going to have to be more careful. And these things do have significance to how people uh, live their lives. So it's it's, an, it's, it's a public policy that really changes our lives, unlike many of these things. Well, another thing that's coming is uh, affordable housing has been such a big focus, the 830G and the being able to force things through, through zoning, the governor talking about transit-oriented housing. Where do we see this playing out as we head into the new year, Dan? There are two ways of looking at it. One is this is going to be a very busy year for housing legislation because the issues are really coming to a head, especially in the towns in the Gold Coast and along the shoreline. And, and up in the Farmington Valley that have resisted some of these changes. You mentioned 830G. 830G in the case, in the opinion of, uh, this is the bill that passed years and years ago, decades ago, that says you have to have X amount of your housing, this 10%, 10 be yeah. affordable, right? And it also says you have to have a plan, and many towns don't have a plan. And so on the affordable housing front for people of low and moderate income, the towns are really not, they're still resisting, and Lamont is on the side of the towns. He's not interested in legislation that tightens the restrictions and makes towns comply. What he's very interested in is money for transit-oriented development, which is higher density development around downtowns, especially where there's a train line, which he's talked about this past week, and in housing for workforce, which is middle class. I want to ask you real quickly, because uh, it's got a Connecticut connection. Joe Lieberman, as we're seeing everything shake out with what's happening in the coming presidential race, is the No Labels Party going to run a candidate, Dan? Well, it's going to be too late already for them. I think it's already too late for them to draft somebody like Joe Manchin or, or uh, Larry Hogan from Maryland that's going to have a real significant effect. And so Lieberman, just a, a week or so ago, I believe it was last weekend, gave an interview on CNBC, in which he said, we're going to pull out. We're not going to do this if we don't get a top tier candidate. And if and if we don't think that it's going to have an effect 
on the political landscape. We're not just going to be spoilers. And he said that before. And so obviously the Democrats are more afraid of Joe Lieberman's no labels than Trump, because Trump's voters, the 38 percent Trump voters are going to vote for Trump no matter what. Um, Biden's support is broad, but not deep. Got it. So Wait. that's the danger is the danger is that a third party candidate takes more from Biden than from Trump. We got two minutes left. I want to talk about this column you have because it's so interesting. I do this every day <laughs> as a real estate lawyer. A, a guy showed up to a lot he owned and found a multi-million dollar house on it, Dan. That's exactly right. That was last uh, spring. And I wrote about it last summer. Uh, the fellow is a doctor from Long Island. And he exactly as you just said, it. he owned a, an empty lot. His family had had it for 70 years, never sold it. And it had been sold out from under him by a fraudster pretending to be him to a local developer in Fairfield who built a house and was on the market for $1.5 million. By the way, the buyer is still waiting in the wings to buy it. And this is tied up in court now, federal and state courts. And the FBI tells the local police that there is a related case in Rhode Island that may be linked. Well, I can tell you in real estate law, we see this all the time. I told you this past week, I got a call from someone who wanted me to represent them on a closing and the seller was uh, overseas and would not be attending and it was a sketchy deal. It's happening all the time. There's a lot of these scam artists. You really feel for everybody. The builder thought he bought this lot from the owner. He spent a bunch of money. There's a buyer for the house. You can understand the doctor says, hey, this is my land. I was saving it for my kids. So where do we go from here? Litigation? Only the lawyers get rich, Dan? Almost definitely a settlement because you've got a $1.5 million asset in the ground. And so it's hard to say it's hard to say the judge is going to order them to tear it down. Quick question in 15 seconds for you, people in the industry like you, is, is this extra vigilance going to stop these scams? Well, that I can tell you, anyone that has title insurance and the lawyers in Connecticut write title insurance policies, they've been told if the seller is not here and not able to come to the table, you have to do extra diligence. They won't write the policy. So it's going to be title insurers that are going to put a kibosh on this thing. But boy, it's really scary if you're at a transaction and you could be taken like this for millions of dollars. It's a big deal. Go check out Dan's column, ctinsider.com. It's super interesting if you have anything to do with real estate. We appreciate you being here on our brand new CT24 Maybe we'll have you back before 25. We'll see you, Dan. Well, I'll be here. I appreciate it. Happy New Year, and we'll be in touch. All right. Thanks, Dan. <laughs>